guys. Hold on. All righty then. Threnis. Oh. Threnis. This guy. Huh? Oh, poor guy. All right, guys. I'm looking old, ain't I? My beard. I'm looking very old, ain't I? Threnis. It's called Threnis. All right. Well, I'm a little tired. I wanted to do cardio, but a little tired. So a video popped up where a Muslim tried to refute Marmari by quoting or by <clears throat> clipping a response that Zachary and I gave to why Jesus will return physically and not Muhammad and why Muhammad died. All right. So anyway, Lord willing, we're going to address it. We're going to go through it. So hopefully it'll be a blessed session. But let me remind you of the rules. Help me to help you. You come and ask relevant questions. I want to cuss you out and your mother. Remind you of where you came from, from the Shia. Because that means you have no class, no respect, no dignity. So why should I respect you? You're going to stay focused. The topic is going to be Zakir Naik versus Marmari. You're not going to bring up relevant issues. You're not going to act tough and brave in the comment section. You're not going to just come here and have a discussion with people. This is a class. But we ask the Holy Spirit to teach using me. And I'm going to engage you to see if you're understanding so I can get feedback. So if you don't want to respect the rules, I'm not going to respect you or your mothers. Because your mothers did a terrible job of raising you. So leave before I start insulting you, because that means you're being used of the devil to cause people to stumble. And the Lord Jesus rebuke and chasing you, teach you his fear, so you repent, so he can save you and save all of us on the day of judgment. So you guys know the rules, right? I don't need to remind you. So you're going to help me to help you. And then also you're going to be prayed up as the spirit to help you focus and understand and help me to speak clearly without error. That if I make a mistake, the spirit will correct it immediately. Because everything good and perfect is from him. Everything imperfect, sinful is from us. May the Spirit perfect us for the glory of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So you guys know the rules, right? And you have articles related to the topic here. So this is another impromptu session. I was going to do cardio, but I was a little tired. And so I saw this. I go, hey, let me just be used of the Spirit. If the Spirit is pleased to work through me, to refute Islam, glorify Jesus Christ, and bless you. Right, it's just what the Lord has put in my heart to do full time ministry. Uh, Kenny, can you shut your pie hole and shut your mouth? Kenny, you're a piece of garbage. You don't know Jesus, you don't know the apostles, you don't know the Bible, you don't know what love is, you don't know what hate is. Kenny, shut your mouth. You're a piece of garbage. You don't know the love of Jesus. You're scum, low life. Get the hell out of here before I cuss you out and your mother, too. Don't pretend to know Jesus and don't come here giving us your effeminate, faggoty, queer bait Christianity. The Lord destroy that fake piety, fake humility, fake humbleness, and destroy our pride, our arrogance, our ego. So shut your mouth. I'm going to insult you. You don't know what love is. You don't know biblical love. You don't know Jesus' love. The Lord constrain us. May the Lord Jesus control, constrain <clears throat> our passions, give us perfect self-control, self-restraint, self-constraint. May the Lord Jesus Christ increase in us, increase in our loved ones, increase in my daughters, even their mother. May the Lord Jesus Christ own us fully, completely, making us his possession. May the Lord Jesus Christ own my ministry. It's his. Doesn't need me. I need him. Own this YouTube channel, my blogs. Close the door of censorship. Destroy opposition. And expand the sphere of influence for his glory, not for my praise. May the Lord Jesus Christ beatify us with his beauty. May we shine with the beauty of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord Jesus make us bold lions and lionesses. Make us full of his love, his passion, his humbleness, his humility, his graciousness, his patience, and his boldness to be lions and lionesses empowered by the Spirit, not to be politically correct. May the Lord Jesus bless my neighbors. They see Jesus in me and let them sleep well so I'm not a nuisance to them with these late night sessions. May the Lord Jesus transform all of us. May the Lord Jesus transform my daughters, even their mother, our loved ones, to conform to his image by the power of the Holy Spirit. Feed us his precious flesh. Grant us his precious blood, the flesh of the Lord Jesus Christ, the blood of the Lamb, 
the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, because our Lord Jesus said in John 6, 55, his flesh is real, true food, and his blood is real, true drink. May the Lord Jesus use his flesh and blood to heal us, transform us, <clears throat> perfect us, save us, deliver us, empower us, and nourish us spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, physically. May the Lord Jesus purge us in the purifying fire of the Holy Spirit. Destroy all lust, destroy every form of blasphemy, idolatry completely. And may the Lord Jesus empower us to never betray or deny or shame his name or blaspheme his name, but love the Lord Jesus Christ by our deeds, glorifying him in our lives and our deaths, and finishing the race by the power of the Holy Spirit, trusting in him, not in us, that the Lord Jesus will save us from our flesh, save us from Satan in the world, and do that for my daughters, their mother, our loved ones. May the Lord Jesus Christ strengthen my throat. My heart, my arteries, my lungs and chest with the <clears throat> health I need from the breath of life, the Lord and giver life, the Holy Spirit, whom the Lord Jesus has poured out from the Father. May the Lord Jesus continue to give me perfect discipline to break my bondage, addiction to food, gluttony, laziness, slothless, as well as lust. Save me from that. Heal me from that. Heal all of us to live a disciplined life spiritually and physically. May the Lord Jesus perfect our sight spiritually so we can see scripture for what it says, and not twist it, and then live it out by the power of the Holy Spirit to show that we love the Lord Jesus Christ. And may the Lord Jesus perfect my sight physically so I can see and not use my eyes for sin, but for purity, for reading the Bible and reading material to help me grow in my love for Jesus and to be used by the Spirit to help you. May the Lord Jesus teach us how to pray, how to sing the praise of our God, how to <clears throat> study the Word and live it out, how to love Him and love one another by our deeds. May the Lord Jesus plant his word in depth of our souls and spirits and our hearts on our tongues and our minds to recall every jot to the portion of scripture perfectly, destroy all forgetfulness. And may the Lord Jesus give us the greatest gifts in his sight, perfect faith in him, hope in him and perfect love for him. And not to do it for numbers or status or position or money, destroy our lust of money and fear of finances. And may the Lord Jesus give me a miraculous del deliverance, <clears throat> a miracle by turning the IRS in my favor and help me to use the blessings of the ministry to raise my daughters, to do the ministry and provide for those in need. Please, Lord Jesus, you shine in and through us and beatifies with your beauty and help me, Lord, discipline to exercise more spiritually and physically and that we don't sin at all, but help us to resist sin and submit to the spirit. Let your spirit use my mouth as his mouthpiece. Bless the internet connection, the audiovisual qualities. We need you. Lord Jesus, destroy all fakeness in us. Fake piety. And these who people who think they're humble, you re rebuke, chasten them to truly repent and truly know what your love is, Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray to destroy the beams in our eyes and my eyes and destroy hypocrisy and that we don't live double lives as many have. And you've exposed because nothing's hidden from you. Have mercy on us, Lord Jesus. And when no one's watching, but you're watching that we love you. Help me, Lord. You know our hearts. We want to love you, but we are weak, but you are strong. And we trust in your strength. Thank you, Son of God. Glory to the Father and the Spirit. Okay, so you guys can tell I'm not as young as I used to be. We get old. You have Rafa, you have Rafa, you have Rafa, Father and Wash us. What am I going to say? The King of Lord Jesus Christ, you have Rafa, Father and Spirit. Wash us. What am I going to say? The Lord Jesus Christ, Father and the Spirit. Anyway. You guys ready? Let's begin. All right. Now, the material is here. Kitty Lason, good to see you. Now, remember, Lepanto, good to see you. This I decided to, because I'm tired sometimes. I When I'm mentally exhausted, I'm tired physically, so I don't get to the gym. I want to do cardio, but we'll do it tomorrow, Lord willing. As long as God give me the grace to eat less, I'll be all right. Help me, Lord, for your glory, Father, and the Spirit. So I said, hey, well, let me respond to this clip. Now, again, we can screen share, so let's get everything ready. Lord Jesus Christ, hold on one second.
Sorry. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I apologize. I was just saying, now I realize why the Assyrian Church, the Catholic Church, the Orthodox Church would begin prayers with the, the Lord's Prayer. Because I said, we'll begin with the Lord's Prayer because it's an Adidike. And I said, I thank the Lord Jesus Christ and I praise him for opening my heart to love the ancient traditions. And I was saying, I love the Catholic Church and I'm in the Catholic Church. And if I didn't die in the Catholic Church, the Lord Jesus says, will be done. Because the issue of the filioque and papacy, I may never resolve it. But I love the Orthodox Church. I do. I'm not saying it to tickle your ears. The Lord purged my motives, not to prostitute myself for numbers, but to be a man of integrity and not condemn others. And I pray I don't end up becoming the thing I hate. The Oriental Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox, love them. The Syrian Church, love them. I even love Protestant Evangelical Trinitarians. The Lord Jesus, I have mercy on you, but I have to be honest. That's not where the fullness of truth is. But still, if you're evangelical and you're Trinitarian, you love Jesus Christ, our Lord, I acknowledge you. And my opinion doesn't matter, but this is my conviction. So, but I thank the Lord for opening my heart. That's what I was saying. But anyway, so, because I was talking about saying the Lord's Prayer, but let me now screen share. Ready? Lord, if I was watch, we're going to say, you know, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, what is this here? Hmm. All right. Let's go here. All right. Screen share. So what I'm going to show you is how to find how to find the materials, right? Okay, screen share. <clears throat> so we go here. <clears throat> you go here. You're going to go <clears throat> to view your channel. Oh, I'm already there. I'm so stupid. All right. Oh, boy. Ah. Oh, I'm already... All right. So you're going to go down here. You're going to scroll here. And here are the articles. Do you see it? Here are the articles related to the session. And I'm going to be responding to. I thought I tagged this guy, didn't I? Hmm. Oh, hold on one second. One second, cronies. Okay, one second, guys. See? I, I, I swore I thought I tagged this guy. This guy right here. There you go. I want him to know that I'm responding to his garbage. One second. So there's the materials right there. You'll see it right there. There it is. We're going to use it. And here's the video. Now, I can't play the sound of the video on this. I can't play the sound of the video here for some reason, but I will show you the video and we're going to begin responding to it. Okay. Let me just show you real quickly. I'm going to show you the video, but I can't play the sound for some reason on this computer. I mean, on this particular, because I'm using Google Chrome. One second. Let me go here. So we go here. So we're going to be doing this one right here. Oh, by the way, Lepanto, everyone else. You, and here's my history. You can see what I watch. Remember I told you, you guys remember when I said that I was a staunch anti-Catholic, thanks to Chak Chick, I was taught that the Catholic Church is run by the Black Pope. You remember I said that? Ironically, what was recommended on my YouTube? What was recommended on my YouTube channel? You guys ready for this? You guys ready? What was recommended? Are you ready? I hope Lampanto's listening. So you know I wasn't lying to you. This is what I was taught. There it is right here. Here is the oath of the Jesuits. What does it say? The black pope. Here it is. You see it? So here's a video by someone who actually has bought into this conspiracy theory, this lie, that there is someone called the black pope, not because he's black, who controls the pope, because it's infiltrated by the Masons. You see that? See that right there? And you can see I love Bruce Lee. You see that, guys? Thought I was lying to you, right? There you go. You see it? Let me enlarge it. I'm sorry. I got to always make it larger. My apologies. One second. You'll see it. See that? The oath. One more time. Beautiful. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for making it easy to screen share, because now the sessions will be much better for the glory of Jesus Christ. You see that? The black pope. Right? There it is. See? 
This is what we were taught. Now, Catholics, do you blame these Protestants who don't know church history, who don't know the Bible that well, who come to saving faith through, let's say, the evangelism of Baptists? They don't know any better. They don't know what the Bible teaches. Someone converts them. And they're learning from individuals who've been taught that there are conspiracies out there. And there are. That includes the Pope. But the Pope is a pawn. He's not the true Pope because there's the black Pope. You see it? Let me enlarge a little more. They don't know any better, man. They don't know any better. Let me enlarge a little more. You see? I want to make it a little larger. See it? The black Pope with his army. One more time. Sorry, guys. It's, it's like when I look at it, it's large enough. But then when I see it here, it's not that large. And there you go. Okay, let's go here. Hold on. There we go. Matt, look, you can see what I watch. Take down with Chris Hansen. I watch this stuff. This is what I do. This is what we're going to be responding to. You see right here? Prophet Muhammad has failed. Dr. Zekar Naik. And the guy has a thick accent. So Indians, Pakistanis, you know I love you. So when I imitate your accent, don't take it personally. This guy's accent, not only Zachary Nike, this guy, super thick. So this is what we're going to be looking at. And here, by the way, here it is. The black pope and his army. See that? So let's go here. Ooh, tasting bad. Let's do, let's do it here. Wait, Bruce Lee, not Bruce. Bruce Lee, Apukete. And you can see I'm watching Matt Slick to torture myself. I don't know why the Bruce Lee. Tell me if you can hear the sound. Hold on. Not the commercial. Tell me if you can hear the sound. I'll ask them, are you fulfilling that law? Of course not. You're falling very short of that law. So don't tell me you have to do this where you are failing as a leader. Your you hear the sound? Those laws. Your own prophet failed them. Who? Muhammad. And all the other leaders. Oh, well, you do hear it. And the, and the very well, reason why Lord. Muhammad failed because he's dead. Their book says that. But their book also oh, Lord, says about my Messiah. Even all right. Then I, you can. All right. Remember... I may get flagged, though, for playing this. Remember, it's called fair use. Copyright law allows us to play clips for educational purposes. Fair use. Lord Jesus, close the door of censorship because I don't want this guy censoring. Oh, glory to God. Glory to the Father, the Spirit. All right, now let's listen. They talk about laws. I'll ask them, are you fulfilling that law? Of course not. You're falling very short of that law. So don't tell me you have to do this where you are failing as a leader. Your prophet failed those laws. Your own prophet failed them. Who? Muhammad. And all the other leaders. <laughs> Such a reporter mode. And the, and the very reason why Muhammad failed, because he's dead. Their book says that. But their book also says about my Messiah, even though the Isa in the Quran is not the Christ of the Holy Bible. Talk you see how beautiful this man is? You see how glorious. Now, by the way, if he tries to flag me, I'm going to... I'm going to contest it. I'm going to get him flagged because he's playing a clip from Patrick but David. If you can play his clip, I can play yours. It's called fair use, all right? Don't be scared. We see what a wonderful man is. You see how upfront he is. He's bold. He's putting his life on the line. May the Lord Jesus protect us and finish the race. He just said, there is not the Messiah. It's not the real Jesus. You see that? Totally separate people. But we cannot claim something that is not truthful. I know truth hurts. I'm not offending people. I'm speaking the truth. And if it offends you, I'm really sorry not. I'm not sorry for that. But let me tell you one thing. <laughs> I'm really sorry not. I'm not sorry for that. <laughs> no matter what he does, he's going crazy. He'd rather be alone. Your book says that Isa, son of Mary, went up to heaven alive and he will come back to judge the dead and the living. If I ask a Muslim who judges, they will say God. Well, you're telling me this prophet will judge. So which is which? Has the prophet taken the role of God? Has God gone on vacation and he's come and take his position? No, <laughs> but Isa is the living Messiah, even their book. Assalamu alaikum, friend. Now, this guy's accent is a killer, dude. Okay. This dude's accent is going to kill you. All right. So I'm going to destroy Zachariah by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. This guy's accent is on a whole nother level. Oh, by the way, you didn't see my shirt. I've been wearing. Let me show you my shirt. Okay. Pray I get leaner. I'm actually feeling there because I've been cutting back and doing cardio to get leaner than before. Okay. Hold on one second. Don't see my love handles. Those never go. I'm actually, uh, I'm actually, 
I'm actually the worst. <laughs> don't don't hate, man. Don't hate. And this is large, by the way. You see, large is loose on me, haters. May it always be loose on me. Okay, now the guy's accent is so bad. The guy's accent is so bad. This is large. You see how loose it is? Man, I never outgrow large. I'm not lying. That's how I know I'm not gaining weight. The guy's ac accent is so bad. Oh, my goodness. I thought Zachariah was bad. Now watch. Watch here. Oh, boy. This guy's going to kill us. Friends, welcome to another video. Another of video. Nike, where a pastor. Uh, where the pastor, man. <laughs> welcome to another video. Where the pastor. You see the head movement? You see where I learned it from? I learned it from. Welcome to another video. Where the pastor, he say. Oh, yeah. Isn't she lovely? Welcome to another video where the Lord say to me. Okay. Describing his thoughts that uh, the Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Muhammad sallallahu Muhammad Hola, man. Welcome to video, man. The video. He's so nice, the video. The Muhammad, he's so nice, man. -la 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 -la. The brother said, the brother said that uh, you said to me, welcome to this video, man. Oh, the brother said, this is Ahad, Ahad. Brother said, Ahad, Ahad. Well, well, like this, man. So nice. I'm so nice. I don't see Jesus in this man. What is it, the Jesus in this man? Do you see Jesus in this man? Can you tell me, please? What do you see, the Jesus? This man, he represents Christianity? What is the Christianity in this man? Brother, do you see Jesus in him? I don't see Jesus in him. What is the Christianity in this brother? Yeah, man. Why well, like this? Why like this, man? Why like this? All right. Mellow. All right, here we go. Die naturally, and Jesus was still alive, so it means that Jesus is the larger prophet. Watch this video. Watch Not this video. We will talk about the video. A Christian friend asked me, why didn't Allah save Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he let him die by a painful death? Well, Jesus was saved according to the Quran only. And he Now watch, he's going to lie. He's going to say, Muhammad did not die a painful death. So we're going to put holes in the narrative. A Christian asked me, why did Muhammad die a painful death? Man, what is it like the furnace in this? What is the Jesus in here, man? No one likes a uh, Christian prince doing second night. Alive in heaven, isn't this proof that Jesus was someone more than just a human prophet, like the Quran claims? With Abdul Qadir, with Abdul Qadir from Algeria has asked a question. Since that is Christian, I said that according to the Quran, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was raised up alive, and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, died a painful death. So doesn't it mean that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was superior to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? First, let me correct you. Look how it The brother said, doesn't uh, mean that brother says Sallallahu Alright, anyway. Oh, okay, let's see. That Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not die a painful death. He died a natural death at the age of approximately 63. He completed his mission. Quran says in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 3, Allah revealed that I have complete my favor unto you and I have chosen for you Islam. So the, his mission was complete. After his mission was complete, he had a peaceful death. He was aware that he would die. He informed that to his father, to, to the Sahabas also. And to say that, why didn't Allah save him? Okay, now let's destroy that lie. He said he did not die a painful death. That's what he said, right? All right, let's let. The tournament begin. Dun, 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 dun. Let's see. Did he not die a painful death? All right, here you go. Let's show you the articles, all right? Let's go. Article number one. Here you go. Article number one. Let's do this. One second. All right. And then we're going to go here. Let's do this. I'm going to screen share. Just give me a second. 
He did not die painful death, brother. Why like this, man? Word to your mother, man. Why you do this, man? Where's the word to your mother, man? Come on, brother. Where's the word to your mother? All right, here we go. Let's do this now, Brutus. Two articles. It's in the description box. Why like this, man? All right, now you ready? Let's share. He said he did not die. A painful death. Okay, let's see. Let me do this till then. No, okay, let's do this. Here you go. Till then. Darling, please wait for me. All right, he said he did not die a painful death. All right, let's see. Okay, I got two articles here. Okay, now let's go here. Now, again, let's go slow so we can learn. Let's go slow so we can learn in Jesus' name. Use the materials. Use the articles. Oops, sorry. See, that's what happens, man. Trying to figure it out. All right. La, 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 la. All right. You see it now? Revisiting the issue of whether Muhammad was certain of his own salvation. Now, both of these articles are in the description box. How Allah killed his prophet. Now, watch here. Let's see. He said he did not die a painful death, but he completed his mission. All right. Let's see what the Quran says. You ready? <clears throat> this is a response to Basam Zawadi, who thought he could refute me. Okay. Let's see. Let's go here. Let me show you something. All right. Let's do this real quickly. Let's go here. Okay, watch here. Let me do this again. Let me enlarge. You guys, I hope you're enjoying it. It takes a little longer, but it's okay. Now we got screen share. Okay, let's see if Muhammad died a painful death. Now, I linked to this article in the previous one. Pay attention. Help me to help you. Chapter 46, verses 8 to 9. Or do they say he has forged it? 46, verses 8 to 9. Okay? Meccan period. 46, verse 8 to 9. Or do they say he has forged it? Say, if I have forged it, you have no power to help me against Allah. So it's saying, if Muhammad forged the Quran, then Allah would kill him. But how will he kill him? Now let's watch. He knows very well what you are pressing upon. He suffices as a witness between me and you. He is the all-forgiving, the all-compassionate. Now watch what Muhammad is commanded to say. Now vision Jesus talking this way. I am not an innovation among the messengers, and I know not what shall be done with me or with you. Can you imagine Jesus speaking that way? Can you imagine Jesus Christ, our Lord, saying, look, I don't know what the Father is going to do with me or you. Now, I hope the screen is large enough for you to see it. It's large enough? I do not know what the Father will do with me and you. Now, remember, they're telling you Muhammad is the greatest man, the perfect man, al insan al kamil, and that he is Sayyid al Mursaleen, the leader of the sent ones, and that all the prophets were led by Muhammad in prayer. So, in other words, he usurps even Jesus. And yet, their Quran has Muhammad saying, I don't know what Allah will do with me or with you. I only follow what is revealed to me. I'm only a clear warner. Now watch the hadiths. The hadiths, okay? Remember, most Muslims are Sunni Muslims. They follow the sunnah. Now one thing I need to remind you. Some of these or older articles, the links are now defunct. Meaning, we are linking to websites that change the URL or, or are no longer online. So you're going to have to... Go to sunnah.com, just put in, copy and paste the right words, and it'll pop up. It's there. Now, this is Sal Bukhari, Volume 5, Book 58, Number 266. I hope the screen is large enough. I can make it larger, but is this okay? Is it large enough? All right. Is it large enough? This is a sound narration, Sahih, according to Sunni Muslims. Okay, now read with me. Narin Um Al. Allah, an Ansari woman who gave the pledge of allegiance to the Prophet, 
that the Ansar drew lots concerning the dwelling of the immigrants. Uthman bin Mazun was decided <clears throat> to dwell with them. I um al Allah's family. Now watch. Uthman fell ill, and I nursed him till he died. And we covered him with his clothes. Then the Prophet came to us, and I, addressing the dead body, said, O oh, Abu as Sayyid, may Allah's mercy be upon you. Now watch. I bear witness that Allah has honored you. Now, she's praying over the man who died. And she goes, I bear witness Allah has honored you. Now watch what Muhammad said. Look at this. On that, the Prophet said, how do you know that Allah has honored him? Did you catch it? How do you know that Allah has honored him? How do you know this? Where would you get this from? Where did you get that Allah has honored him? Because look what he's going to say. <clears throat> I replied, I do not know. <clears throat> I don't know that. May my father and my mother be sacrificed for you, O Allah's apostle. But who else is worthy of it if not Uthman? Now watch what Muhammad says. He said, as to him, by Allah, death has ever taken him. And I hope the best for him. By Allah, though I am the apostle of Allah, I do not know what Allah will do to me. Do you catch it? I don't even know what Allah is going to do to me. How do you know this man is blessed? I don't know what happened to him. Wow, can you imagine Jesus saying, can you imagine Jesus saying to Peter, if his mother... Allah died. Peter, how do you know where your mother-in-law is? Well, I don't know, but she was a good woman. Let me tell you something, Peter. I don't even know what the father's going to do with me, let alone with your mother-in-law. Right? But then, supposedly later, he received revelation. By Allah, I will never. Now, she says, Um al-Ala. She goes, after I heard Muhammad say that, I will never assert the piety of anyone after him. Man, if that's the case, I'm never going to talk about anyone being pious after that. That made me sad. And when I slept, I saw in a dream a flowing stream for Uthman bin Mazun. And I went to Allah's apostle and told him of it. He remarked, that symbolizes his good deeds. So at least you saw a dream that he has good deeds. Wow. You got it? Is this blowing you away? Save the materials, Christians. Use them in your witness to Muslims to get them to know the Lord Jesus Christ, their true hope of salvation. Now watch here, though. Here's another one. Narrated Abu Huraira. Sal Bukhari again. Volume 4. Book 51, number 16. When Allah revealed the verse, warn your nearest kinsmen. Allah's apostle got up and said, Oh, people of Quraysh, or said similar words. Buy yourselves from the hair fire, as I cannot save you from Allah's punishment. Damn. What is this, man? Imagine Jesus saying, save yourself from the Father's wrath, because I cannot save you from his wrath. O Bani Abdmanaf, I cannot save you from Allah's punishment. O Safiya, his own aunt, the aunt of the apostle, Allah's apostle, I cannot save you from Allah's punishment. Now, even his own daughter, O Fatima bint Muhammad, ask me anything from my wealth, but I cannot save you from Allah's punishment. Right? Okay, but now what about his painful death? You want to see how painful his death was and why it shows that Muhammad is a false prophet? In that article, the Quran says if Muhammad is a liar, the Quran says if Muhammad is a liar and he made up the Quran, that Allah would grab him by his right hand and cut off his life vein and he would die a horrendous death. Now watch, chapter 10, verse 15 of the Quran. Watch the humiliation for Muslims. <clears throat> And when our signs are recited to them, clear signs, those who look not to encounter us say, bring a Quran other than this, right? Or alter it. So I'm reading this. Say, it is not for me to alter it of my own accord. I follow nothing except what is revealed to me. Truly, I fear if I should rebel against my Lord, the chastisement of a dreadful day. If I mess with the Quran, Allah is going to mess with me. Now watch this. This is the humiliation. Chapter 69, verses 40 and 46. You can include also verse 47. It is a speech of a noble messenger. It is not the speech of a poet, little do you believe, nor the speech of a soothsayer, little do you remember, and sending down from the Lord of all being. Now watch the warning. Had he, Muhammad, <clears throat> invented against us sayings, we would have seized him by the right hand, and then we'd have sh surely have cut his life vein, his aorta, his life vein. Now watch. How Muhammad died according to the Muslim tradition. 
Look how he died. The History of Al-Tabri, the Victor of Islam, Volume 7, page 124. Remember what it said? If Muhammad is a liar, then his life vein would be cut off, right? Pay attention. The Messenger of God said during the illness from which he died, the mother of Bishr had come in to visit him. The mother Bishr, Bishr was someone who got poisoned by a Jewish woman. Let me show you how embarrassing Islam is. And we're going to read the report. A Jewish woman whose family had been killed by Muhammad cooked lamb for Muhammad, and she knows that Muhammad likes to eat the shoulder of a lamb. Unbeknownst to Muhammad, she poisoned it. One of Muhammad's companions, Bishr, ate it, and he saw there was something off and suspected it was poison, but he didn't spit it out because Muhammad ate it, didn't spit it out. Bishr died, and Muhammad spit it out, but too late because the poison entered his body and slowly started killing him. So now the mother comes to him. The mother Bishr had come in to visit him. Um Bishr, at this very moment, I feel my aorta being severed because of the food I ate with your son at Khaybar. But wait, didn't Zachariah say Muhammad didn't die a painful death? But doesn't Zechariah's authentic sources say Muhammad died a painful death and he died the death of an accursed antichrist false prophet? Because the Quran says if he's cursed, then his aorta, his life end would be cut off. You caught it? Well, hold on. He'll say, well, that's Tariq al-Tabari. Oh, but we got Sahih Muslim. Wait a minute. Anas reported that a Jewish woman a Jewess came to Allah's messenger with poisoned mutton and he took of that what had been brought into him. When the effect of the poison were felt by him, he called for and asked her about that. Why did you poison me, the food? Now look what she said. Whereupon she said, I had determined to kill you. Now look what she says. Thereupon he said, Allah will never give you the power to do it. Yeah, but you still died of the poison. I guess... Either you're an ignoramus or Allah did let you die. He said that they, the companions of the Holy Prophet said, should we not kill her? Thereupon he said, no, other traditions said he had her killed. But now watch what he says. This Muhammad, he said, I felt the effects of the poison on the uvula of Allah's messenger. All right, still not convinced? Okay, Sal Bukhari, volume five, book 59, number 713, thir right? Narrated Ibn Abbas, Umar bin al-Khattab used to let Ibn Abbas sit beside him. So Abdul Rahman bin Auf said to Umar, we have sons similar to him. Umar replied, I respect him because of his status that you know. Umar then asked Ibn Abbas about the meaning of this verse. When comes the help of Allah and the conquest of Mecca? Now watch. Ibn Abbas replied, that indicated the death of Allah's apostle, which Allah formed him of. Umar said, I do not understand of it except what you understand. So I accept what you say, Ibn Abbas. Narrated Aisha, the prophet in his ailment in which he died, used to say, oh, Aisha, I still feel the pain caused by the food I ate at Khaybar. And at this time, I feel as if my aorta is being cut off from that poison. Damn. But wait, what did the Quran say? We indeed created man, and we know what his soul whispers within him, and we are nearer to him than his jugular vein. When the two angels meet together, sitting one on the right and one on the left, not a word he utters, but by him is an observer ready, and death's agony comes in truth. That is what thou wast shunning. So Allah's rebuking unbelievers. You're going to face the agony of death. You can't escape it. But wait. Why the hell is Muhammad facing the agony of death? And the kind of death he faced is the one that here it said, had he invented against us any sayings, we would have seized them by the right hand and they would have surely have cut his life vein. Damn. What happened here? He died the way the Quran said he would die if he was a cursed liar. What? But I got more. 
Are you catching this? You caught it? You understand what we just read? It's in the articles. David and I have talked about this often. Now, some will say, well, doesn't that prove the Quran is true? Now, let me anticipate an objection. Well, doesn't that prove the Quran is true? Well, at the expense of your prophet being in hell. When a Muslim tells you, you just prove the Quran is true. Because the Quran said, if Muhammad is a liar, Allah would cut off his aorta. Well, Allah cut off his aorta. See, the Quran is true. Yeah, but at the expense of Muhammad being damned to hell. Because if the Quran is true, that Muhammad's aorta would be cut off because he's a false prophet and his aorta was cut off, that means he's a false prophet, he's in hell. So why are you following him? You can't have your cake and eat it too. Secondly, it's not that the Quran is true. Let me tell you how amazing Jesus is. You want to see how amazing and humble our Lord Jesus Christ is? How amazing and humble our Lord Jesus Christ is? The Lord Jesus is taking the very words of Muhammad and killing him dead in the exact manner that Muhammad said he would die if he's a false prophet to give irrefutable proof to Muslims he's a false prophet. Abandon him. That's the love of our Lord Jesus Christ in trying to save Muslims. And repeat the two responses to this objection. Okay? Response number one. If this proves the Quran is right, then it proves that the Quran is right about Muhammad. He's an antichrist, a false prophet, and Allah hates him and killed him and damned him to hell. So what do you say about that, Muslims? So if the Quran is right, Muhammad is in hell. Why do you follow him? You get it? But no, it doesn't mean the Quran is right in that it's revelation from God. It means Jesus Almighty over Satan, over Allah of the Quran and Muhammad, killed Muhammad in the exact manner that Muhammad said he would die if he's a liar, in order to give you proof, Islam is a lie, and you need to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. You with me there? Now, let me show you that life and death is in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, here you go. Let me show you. Revelation 1, 17 to 18, and 2, 18 to 23. Revelation 1, 17 to 18. Okay, watch here. Let me show you that life and death is in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Okay, watch here. For you guys. Okay, watch here. Watch. Who controls life and death? Revelation 1, 17, 18. And when I saw him, I fell. Love you too, Albert. Brother, believe it or not, I was thinking about you to come see you. Don't give out your location. I love you, Al. Hemman, the Lord bears witness. I was thinking I have to go and see him. I've been busy. Love you, brother. Lord bless you and your family. And when I saw him, Albert Yonah, my bro, I fell at his feet like a dead man. And he placed his right hand on me, saying, do not fear. I am the first and last and the living one and was dead. So this is Jesus speaking. But what does Jesus claim to possess? And behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and Hades. You know what Jesus is saying? He is Lord over life and death. He's Lord over the grave and Hades. He is the one who controls life and death. And you die when the Lord says you die. You're in his control. <clears throat> and therefore, Muhammad died because Jesus struck him dead and damned him to Hades. See that? This shows that Jesus claimed to be God. And here, another one. We'll go a little bit deep on this one. I've dealt with this before. Revelation 2, 18 to 23. Okay, To the church in Thyatira. And to the angel of the church in Thyatira, right? this is what the Son of God. Not God the Father, Son of God. The one who has eyes like a flame of fire. So he can pierce through your heart, your soul with his eyes. Pierce you. Right? See in you. Right? And his feet are like burnished bronze, says. So what does he say? Watch. Look at the words of our Lord and learn. I know your deeds. See, Jesus is saying he's ever-present, all aware. I know your deeds and your love and faith and servants and perseverance 
and that your last deeds are greater than at the first. I know what you're doing, when you do it, why you do it. And so you have more deeds than before, but I have a problem with you. But I have this against you, that you tolerate the woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, and she teaches and deceives my slaves. Wow, so Jesus in heaven has slaves on earth. So we are Abdul Masih, Abdul Yesuh, not Abdullah. Hmm. So it is false prophetess is deceiving my slaves that they commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed idols. So let us practice what we preach. Lord, help us. Help our sisters. Help us. The Lord hates sexual morality. We need to keep pure. No sex until marriage in Jesus' name. Lord, help me. And we do not go to pagan temples and partake of sacrifices to idols. In the modern context, you know what that means for us slaves of the Lord Jesus? Notice we're not Abdullah. We're Abdul Messiah, Abdul Yesuh, Abdul Ibn Allah. Slaves of the Messiah, slaves of Jesus, slaves of the Son of God. You know what that means? You pray for one another. We stay sexually pure until marriage. And you know what that means? Christians, you don't go to Hindu temples. You don't go to Buddhist temples. You don't go to mosques and partake of their festivities because you are now partaking of demons. You caught it? A warning for us. Though Jesus is speaking to the church, what he says to the church applies to all Christians till the Lord returns. Are you with me there? Are you learning? You got to make sure you're getting it before I move on. Do you see it? No mosque festivities. You don't go iftar. Break fast with Muslims during Ramadan because it's coming up. You don't go to their Eid and celebrate. You don't do it because all of the Quran is a false god. Muhammad is a false prophet. Buddhism is a false religion. Hinduism is false. So now what does Jesus say? Look at Jesus' mercy. Learn about our Lord. Let's learn about his character and nature. Look what he says. And I gave her time to repent. And she does not wish to repent of her sexual immorality. Did you catch it? The Lord doesn't rush to destroy and condemn you for sin because he doesn't want you to die. He doesn't want you to perish. He wants you to turn and live. So he waits and gives you time. So even with a false prophetess, he wanted her to live. Did you see the love of the Lord for false prophets? Even this false prophetess, Jezebel, he wanted her to live. So he gave her time to repent. But in her stubborn, stubbornness, she refused. That means Jesus wanted even Muhammad to repent. You get it? Like McFly's whore mother, this whore prostitute, wanted her to repent. But too late, she gave birth to this bastard, McFly. You see it? You see the heart of Jesus? He doesn't want anyone to perish, not even false prophets. But now notice why the Lord waits patiently. Doesn't the Lord know she won't repent? Yes. You want me to go deep, right? But I need you to listen, not be distracted. Okay. Why, if the Lord knows the outcome, because I'm not an open theist, does he give her time to repent? To demonstrate his perfect justice. Because he's showing us, look, even though I waited for her to repent, in her stubbornness, she continued to sin against me. Therefore, she deserves the judgment I unleash on her. That's wisdom. Lest we say, look, the Lord in haste, right? Being rash, he destroyed her and didn't give her time to repent. No. Look, look how much time I give her. But she doesn't repent. She continues to oppose me and defy me and sin against me. Therefore, she deserves what I'm about to bring on her. Don't question my justice, my wisdom. My mercy and love and compassion. You see the wisdom of our Lord? You see the wisdom of our Lord? Now watch the power he has. The Lord has power over life and death, over sickness and health. 
Because look at his power. Behold, I threw her on a bed of sickness. And those who commit adulter adultery with her into great tribulation, unless they repent of her deeds. Notice the Lord's power. Adultery means spiritual adultery. You can commit adultery in one of two ways. Physically or spiritually. Spiritually is when you cheat on your husband, Jesus. Jesus is my husband. I'm pledged to him. And I go and do things against his will or fail to do the things he says should be done. And I go and serve other gods. I'm committing spiritual adultery against my husband. This is what the Lord is saying. But now notice his power. He caused her to get sick. He caused her to get sick. No, Benjamin is talking about the Bible teaching. There's a Bible teaching that says the Lord has a measure of sin that he will tolerate. And when you reach that measure, then you reach the point of reprobation, blasting the Holy Spirit, and it's over. That's what he's talking about. The verses that he's referring to is Genesis 15, verse 16, Matthew 23, 32 to 33, Matthew 23, 35, Clue 36, 1 Thessalonians 2, 16. That's what he's referring to. There's a limit of how much sin God will tolerate. And then it's over. So he's referring to scripture, guys. Take it easy. All right, Genesis 15, 16. Matthew 23, 32 with 33. Matthew 23, 35 and 36. And 1 Thessalonians 2, 16. But read 14 to 16. But now watch the power of our Lord. Behold, I will throw her on a bed of sickness. And those who commit adultery with her in great tribulation, unless they repent of her deeds. Now let's learn how the Lord operates with those who name the name of Christ. If you're in willful sin, unrepentant sin, the Lord will then send you warning to repent. And if you continue, then he'll allow all hell to break loose on your life or even cause you to get sick. In other words, some Christians are sick or homeless or struggling financially or miserable because of unrepented sin. And this is the Lord's way of getting your attention to repent. You get what the Lord is telling you here? Again, notice the heart of the Lord. If they repent, I will forgive them and heal them. Now watch his power. This is Jesus, guys. This is how powerful Jesus is. He's almighty God. Don't let him lie to you. The Bible shows that Jesus claims to be God. Yep, that's Revelation 3.19. I'm going to show you that from the Lord as well. And I will kill her children with pestilence. You caught it? I will even kill her spiritual children, those who follow her, those who think she's a prophetess, those who believe her teaching. Even though they've been warned she's a false prophetess, I will strike them dead with disease. So the Lord will inflict diseases such as cancer or COVID and even take you out because he's in control over health and sickness, life and death. And when I do that, then the churches will know, look who I am. Then the churches will know that I am he. I am the one who searches the minds and hearts and will give to each one of you according to your deeds. Then you'll know I know everything and everyone, and I know what's in your hearts and your minds, and therefore I'll repay you perfectly according to what you've earned. You see how glorious Jesus is? So if you believe what you read in the Bible, who struck Muhammad dead and killed Muhammad dead and buried him in hell? Jesus. Who struck Muhammad dead and killed Muhammad according to the very claim of the Quran that if Muhammad is a liar, his heir would be cut off? Who killed him in the manner that Muhammad said would prove he's a false prophet to show he's a false prophet? Jesus. Jesus, you see? So that's how you respond to a Muslim who tells you, oh, so you're saying the Quran is true, right? And if he says that, then he'd be stupid. If a Muslim is stupid enough to come up and tell me, oh, so you're saying the Quran contains a true prophecy. Because the Quran says if Muhammad lied, his life vein would be cut off. Well, buddy, did you understand what you just said? If this is a prophecy that's true, that means Allah hates Muhammad 
killed Muhammad and damned him to hell. So the prophecy of the Quran shows that Muhammad is in hell. You sure you want to argue that way? But from the Christian perspective, it's not that the Quran is true. It's that the Lord Jesus used Muhammad's own words against him to give irrefutable proof Muhammad is a false prophet in hell. Because Jesus controls life and death. He controls Muhammad's life and damned him to hell. See? Making sense? Sinking in? Either way, Muhammad loses. But you saw what Zechariah said? Zechariah lied. He said, no, he didn't die in painful death. What do you mean he didn't? Okay, watch. Let's go back. All the articles are there for you. There it goes right here. What do you mean he didn't? There it is. Let's look at it. And by the way, I'll do a session on how Muhammad allowed people to change the Quran. It's in the article, so go study it. I won't do it here, but I just want to show you again how he died. Watch here. All right, watch here. Now, you want to see God's sense of humor? You want to laugh? Okay. Here's another reference. We already looked at Sahih Muslim. And we also looked at Sahih Bukhari. But now watch this. Ibn Sa'ad, Kitab, Al-Tabaqat, Al-Kabir. Volume 2, pages 251-252. Watch how Jesus has a sense of humor. The Apostle of Allah lived after this three years. When he was poisoned, he lived three years, till in consequence of his pain, he passed away. Notice he didn't eat too much of the poison. He only ate enough of the poison that it stayed in his bloodstream, and then it became worse and worse until finally it killed him. He used to say, I did not cease to find the effect of the poison morsel. I took it, Khaybar, and I suffered several times from its effect, but now I feel the hour has come off the cutting of my jugular vein. See it? His own words, according to Muslim sources. You know why I say God has a sense of humor? Do you know why I say God has a sense of humor? Let me tell you why. You ready why? And I'm going to show you some hadith. A Jewish woman kills Muhammad dead by giving him lamb to eat. Jewish woman, lamb. The Lord Jesus, the Lamb of God, born of a Jewish woman, the Virgin Mary. And whoever opposes him, whoever rejects him, whoever rejects his two identity, brings judgment upon him. So if you eat the Lord's body and blood in an unworthy dead, you eat judgment upon yourself. That's what 1 Corinthians 11 27 and 34 says, right? 1 Corinthians 11, 27 and 34, we are warned. You better examine yourself that you don't eat the Lord's body and drink his blood unworthy manner because then you're going to bring judgment on yourself. And that's why there are people at Paul's time who because they ate the Lord's Supper in an unworthy manner, they got sick and died. Here. You see the Lord's sense of humor? 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 34. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was being betrayed took bread and had given thanks. He broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. Now watch the warning. And God was doing miracles and signs that Jesus is real. The Lord is alive. And you better not profane the bread and the cup, which is his body and blood. Watch. Paul's writing to people who are seeing this. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. You'll be sinning against his body and blood. And the Lord's body and blood cannot be tainted, defiled. It will bring judgment on you. But a man must test himself, and in so doing, he is to eat the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks 
eats and drinks judgment to himself if he does not judge the body rightly. Damn. Now look what he says. For this reason, many among you are weak and sick and a number sleep. You see what he's saying? That's why some of you got weak and sick and some of you died. Because you ate the Lord's body and drank his blood in unworthy manner. And you got judged because of it. You got ill because of it and died. Hmm. Wow. You can't, you see it? But if we judge ourselves rightly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are disciplined by the Lord so that we will not be condemned long with the world. Now, you see what it's saying? When the Lord Jesus chastens and rebukes you for your sin, it's because he wants to save you from the wrath to come on the day of judgment to convict you to repent because he wants you to live, not die. So then, my brothers, when you eat, <clears throat> when you come together, eat, wait for one another. If anyone is hungry, let him eat at home so that you will not come together for judgment. The, re the remaining matters I will direct when I come. Now, you see the Lord's sense of humor? A Jewish woman gives Muhammad poison lamb, shoulder of a lamb, that killed him dead, caused him pain and cut off his aorta, proving he's a false prophet. Because Jesus is the Lamb of God, born of a Jewish woman, the Virgin of Virgins, Holy Mary. And these are in their sources. See why Muslims hate us? But the Lord, may he live in and through us and glorify his name in and through us. And finish the race. Rek, how do the Shia bury your mother for being a Shia whore and a prostitute for giving birth to a dog like you? Get this dog out of here. You got it? Well, wait, I got a little more. I want to show you. Remember, Zechariah said, no, he didn't die in pain. No, the brother, he didn't die in pain. His wife, fuck her in, fuck a chash. Fuck her in, fuck a chash. Fuck her in, fuck a chash. What's here? Let's see. Watch here. Let me show you this. Here you go. Sunnah.com. Okay, let me go here. Let me enlarge it. All you do in the search engine, you put Aisha Aorta. Look what pops up. Let me now increase it. Sunnah.com. Thank the Lord for modern resources. Use them to expose Muhammad. So you go there and watch here. You put Aisha Aorta. Look what comes up. Sail Bukhari, Volume 5, Book 59, Hadith 73, 713. Look, guys. Look. Narrated Aisha, the prophet in his ailment, when which he died, used to say, Oh, Aisha, I still feel the pain. I still feel the pain caused by the food I ate at Khaybar. And at this time, I feel as if my aorta is being cut from that poison. This is Sahih, guys. Okay, anything else? Look at here. Narrated Ibn Kab bin Malik, on the authority of his father, Um. Mubashir said to the prophet during the sickness of which he died. Oh, no, he didn't die in pain. What do you think about your illness, messenger of Allah? I do not think about the illness of my son except the poison sheep of which he had eaten with you at Khaybar. Now, what kind of a humiliation? He's supposedly a prophet. He couldn't save his friend from dying of that poison sheep and couldn't save himself. Now, look what he says. The prophet said, and I do not think about my limbs except that this is the time when it cut off my aorta. That's when it cut off my aorta, guys. This is Sunan Abi Dawood, type of, type of blood with it, with Kitab al Diyad, right? You caught it? See it? Now let's look at it. Great Sahih in chain. Sunan Abu Dawood, Book 40, Hadith 4499. You see how he lied to us? How Zachariah lied to us? What did he say? No, man, he didn't die, man. Why like this? Why are you lying, man? Oh, so nice. <laughs> Let's see if we find some more. Here it is, the whole story, Khaybar, right? Okay. Great Hassan Sahih. Great Hassan Sahih. Book 40, Hadith 4497 from Sunan Abu Dawood. 
Okay, look what he says. She said, if you are a prophet, let me read it. This is a nice one. Let's read it, right? You guys have time, right? Okay. Narrated Abu Huraira, the Messenger of Allah would accept the present, but would not accept alms, sadaqah. And Wahab bin Baqiyya narrated to us elsewhere from Khalid, from Muhammad, Ibn Amr, said on the authority of Abu Salama, and he did not mention the name of Abu Raira, the Messenger of Allah, blah, 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 used to accept present, but not alms, sadaqah. This version had, so a Jewess presented him with Khaybar with a roasted sheep, which he had poisoned. The messenger of Allah ate it, and the people also ate. He then said, take away your hands, for it has informed me that it is poison. Notice, the, the sheep did not inform him that it was poison before he ate it. Only when he put it in his mouth that it informed him. How convenient. Why did it tell you before you ate it? Why did it tell you before he ate it and your friend ate it so your friend Bishr wouldn't die? Bishr ibn al-Bara bin Marur al-Ansari died. Only someone stupid would believe this. Wait, wait, wait. Muhammad, so the sheep only told you it's poison when you put it in your mouth? O only after your friend ate and died? So the sheep couldn't tell you before you did it? How convenient, huh? Hold on. Let's go a little larger. And then look what he says. So he said to the prophet, the prophet said to the Jewish woman, what motivated you to do the work you have done? She said, if you were a prophet, it would not harm you. Did you catch it? It would not harm you. But wait, didn't it harm him? Didn't it kill his friend? Didn't it cause him pain for three years? And then when he died, he says, I feel the effects cutting off my aorta. She was right. If you're a real prophet, it would not harm you. But it did harm him. That means you're a liar. You're just a king trying to make yourself famous and rich. So she said, but if you're a king, I should rid the people of you. Good riddance. The messenger Allah then ordered regarding her and she was killed. You see the contradiction? One narration says she wasn't killed. Here it says she was killed. He then said about the pain of which he died, I continue to feel the pain. From the morsel which I had eaten at Khaybar, this is a time when it has cut off my aorta. Hassan Sahih, good sound. Sunan Abu Dawood, book 40, hadith 4497, and sunnah.com. All you do is put in the search engine, Aisha Aorta. All right? You catching it? See that? Well, just let me find one more thing. See if I can find this. Okay, let's do this. One second. I want to find something here. One, okay, one second. Give me a second. One second. All right. Give me one second. All right, let me do this one second. Give me one second. I want to find something. Okay, here you go. This one here. This one's a beaut. Okay, this one's a beaut. Aisha. Here it is. Aisha, let me get you the link. Sunan Ibn Majah. Lewis, why don't you shut your pie hole and get the hell out of here? If you don't like it, return to your vomit, you piece of garbage. They can come up here and debate. We're not entertaining the here. Aisha said, I never saw anyone suffer more pain than the messenger of Allah. Great Sahih. Volume 1, Book 6, Hadith 1622. You caught it? You see it? Okay. Let me find another one for you. So there you go. Anyway, that's what I wanted to find. You caught it? All right. So we just destroyed the liar's lie. The liar's lie. What did he say? He said, Muhammad did not die a painful death. That's what the liar said, right? Okay. Now let's go back. Let's go back and finish it. All right.
see what else he says. All right, let's go here. All right. To say that why didn't Allah save him? Allah saved him many times. Many and times. we know from the theory of the Prophet وسلم, that before Hijrah, the, many the Arabs of Makkah, Makkah, they planned that one from each tribe will get together and they will stab and kill the Prophet so that the blame is divided equal in all the tribes and that will be safer. So when they plan and they go to kill the board, when they're about to kill him, they find out the person sleeping on the bed of the Prophet was somebody else. So Hazrat Ali, may Allah be pleased with him. Did you hear it? And they don't kill him. And Did you hear it? Did you hear what he said? Because you can't hear it because his action. The 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 kill him. The the Ali said tell him. He save him. The brother say he save him. Did you hear what the coward said? Did you hear it right? Did you hear what the coward said? Did you hear what he said? He goes when the pagans wanted to kill Muhammad, Allah saved them, but he didn't. Say it slow enough for you to catch it. Did you know what Muhammad did? Muhammad, this is what he did. He told Ali ibn Abu Talib, his cousin, sleep in my bed, pretend you're me, so that the Quraysh will think you're me, because they plan to kill him. So when they went to Muhammad's house, they saw someone sleeping in the bed, and they thought it was Muhammad, but it was Ali, because Muhammad and Abu Bakr took off like cowards. You see how fast he said it? He didn't want you to hear it, right? Let's play it again. They will stab and kill the Prophet so that the blame is divided equal in all the tribes, and that will be safer. So when they plan and they go to kill the board, when they're about to kill him, they find out the person sleeping on the bed of the Prophet was somebody else. So Hazrat Ali, may be pleased with him. Did you hear it? When they went to kill him in the bed, they found it was someone else, Ali ibn Abu Talib. Do you see what he did? Now, what kind of prophet is this that would have his young cousin, Ali ibn Abu Talib, risk his life by pretending to be Muhammad in the bed, knowing that he may get killed in order to take off with Abu Bakr? See that? See what he did? Do you hear what he said? Okay, one more time. Then I'm going to show you Islam Q&A acknowledging this. Watch here again. They will stab and kill the Prophet so that the blame is divided equal in all the tribes and that 